Let's solve another series of problems involving ideal gases in closed systems. A closed rigid tank is filled with a gas modeled as an ideal gas, initially at 27 degrees C, and it has a gauge pressure of 300 kilopascals. The gas is heated, and the gauge pressure at the final state is 367 kilopascals. Determine the final temperature in degrees C. The local atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. Let's lay out our storyboard for this problem. We have an unknown ideal gas, we don't know specifically what gas it is, in a rigid tank. And I'm going to show that uh, the system, which is uh, contained within my system boundary, is the ideal gas. So all the molecules of the gas are our system, and we're going to heat it. Let's look at what we're given. <clears throat> State one has a temperature of 27 degrees C and a gauge pressure of 300 kilopascals. State two has a pressure of, and that is a gauge pressure again, of 367 kilopascals. And this is a heating process. Now, what this lesson uh, is uh, purporting to show us is that we cannot use degrees centigrade or gauge pressures in our uh, ideal gas uh, computations. We always have to use absolute pressures and absolute temperatures. So I'm gonna draw a TV diagram and I've gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves here because I'm showing it in uh, degrees Kelvin and I'm showing uh, absolute pressures rather than what we were given. But uh, when we get to the next slide, I'll show you how I did this. State one, it has an absolute temperature of 300 degrees Kelvin and it is at a um, absolute pressure of 401.4 kilopascals. This is a constant volume process, so we're going to go up a vertical line on the TV diagram and to a state T2, <clears throat> unknown. But the pressure here, the absolute pressure, is 468.4 kilopascals. We'll model this as a closed system and we'll ignore any uh, insignificant changes in kinetic and potential energy. Uh, it's a constant volume process involving an ideal gas and we wanna find the final temperature in degrees C. So as mentioned before, uh, we need to work with absolute temperatures and absolute pressures when we're dealing with the ideal gas law. So T1 was given as 27 degrees centigrade. We need that in degrees Kelvin. And we know how to convert degrees C to degrees K. We just add 273. So now we have T1 is 300 degrees Kelvin. Now I'm gonna take standard atmospheric pressure at sea level to be 101.4 kilopascals. You might have used a 100 kilopascal, rounded that off a bit, but um, this would be more accurate. And we know that the absolute pressure is equal to the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. So the absolute pressure at P1 is its gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. So we have an absolute pressure at state one of 401.4 kilopascals. The same with state two. The absolute pressure at state two is the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure so we get an absolute pressure of state two as 468.4 kilopascals. Now, we don't know uh, specifics about this gas. We're told it's an ideal gas, so we could use the ideal gas law, PV equals MRT, but we don't know the mass and we don't even know what the gas is, so we certainly don't know R. So we're not gonna be able to solve the gas law equation at any given state directly. Now, when we can't do the, that, we can do something that's uh, fairly handy, and that's to use the ideal gas law at each state to develop a relationship between the two states. So let's do that this way. Let's rewrite the gas law as P over T equals MR over V. Well, notice that MR over V is a constant. It's a closed system, so the mass is constant. The gas constant is by definition a constant. And this is a constant volume process. The, the, the volume of the rigid tank does not change. So I can conclude that P over T is a constant. And this allows me to write 
that P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. I can rearrange and solve for T2, my unknown, and that's T1 times P2 over P1. Now, we're going to be very careful here. We were asked for temperature, uh, a final temperature in degrees C, but we must use degrees Kelvin and absolute pressures in our equations for uh, ideal gases. So T2 is equal to T1, which is 300 Kelvin, times P2 over P1, both given in absolute pressures, not the gauge pressures that were part of the problem statement. And when I do that, I get a final temperature of 350 degrees Kelvin. But we were asked to solve the problem in degrees C. So I'll subtract 273 and I'll um, reduce Kelvin degrees uh, to centigrade degrees. Now the temptation here is to solve this equation. Looking for T2 in degree C is to go ahead and put T1 in in degree C. And because the gauge pressures were given, uh, it's easy to just go ahead and plug gauge pressures in here. Well, degree C and gauge pressures will not work. You must use uh, absolute temperatures and absolute pressures when you're dealing with ideal gas law.